she's so beautiful. Look at that freaking gorgeous peach color. I just, I can't, but I can and I will. And welcome back to another episode of I Am Clearly Thriving. <laughs> I woke up with like swollen naked mole rat eyes. I'm dying of allergies. It's been crazy. You guys might have noticed on my Instagram that there have not been any sunrise photos lately. It's because I haven't seen the sunrise in a few days. I've been seeing the back side of my eyelids. Anyway. Guys, today is a very much anticipated day. Probably the most requested product. Like, I put it in every video, like mentioned it in every video since I ordered it, and yet still people were just bombarding me with messages and tagging me in all the photos of RMS on their Instagram, things like that, being like, Khaki, are you gonna test this? Khaki, are you gonna test this? And I'm like, Yes. <laughs> so this is the new RMS Beauty Uncover Up Cream Foundation, and I got it in the shade 11. There are quite a few shades of this. Khaki should have pulled this up before you got on camera. Oh, also guys, I um, started using Ecosia, the search engine that plants trees, except the problem is that it functions off of the Bing algorithm. So like you type something in like RMS foundation shades and you just, it's like going back to 2006. It's so bad. I want to plant trees, but I also want my internet to work. What's nine times two is 18 minus two is 16. There are 16 shades here. They do have a generous amount of pale shades. I can only judge that by the fact that I am the third shade in the range. There is a triple zero, a double zero, and then I am 11. Turns out to be a very good shade match for me. You'll see in a second. This is what it looks like when it comes, unless you are my viewer. She showed me a picture of hers. I'll stick it on the screen. I screenshotted it in the Instagram messenger because I don't know what happened, but hers came like whipped and it doesn't work very well. And we both ordered ours from Credo and they've been very helpful with her, but she paid for rush shipping and things like that. And hers just came in this really like not okay situation. And they told her to put it in the fridge, but I'm telling you no amount of refrigeration was going to make hers look like mine again, you know? RMS, if you are unfamiliar, is a brand that prides itself on being very low heat. One of the things about clean beauty and potent ingredients is that a lot of times, I mean, it can be argued that the amount of heat that they are exposed to in order to make them shelf stable and in order to get them into a package and look really pretty, it often kills whatever advertised potent ingredients they have in there anyway. So RMS is coming out from the angle of, you know, we never heat things past the point that they would lose their potency. So that said, everything comes, you know, in this very like solid form, all of their creams, and then, you know, you kind of have to warm them up. So I'm actually using this It Cosmetics uh, for Ulta airbrush situation. I love this little thing. It's a really, really good, uh, like a buffing brush for cream products. And I like the shape of it, it kind of gets in all the little crevices. Um, other lines make products like this, uh, brushes like this. Sigma is the word I'm trying to think of. I, you know, was, and probably still am, uh, a Sigma affiliate, but, and I still actually have an entire box of the introductory package that they send out to new affiliates, but their brushes mildew, like they mold. Like anytime you wash them, there's no amount. I think that that's why they have like their own washing and drying system is because they know that their brushes will mold if you don't use that. I don't know. So I am just using the first time I did about this much and I'm gonna do that again because, um, the, you know, I'm trying to get full coverage here or not full coverage, but cover my whole face kind of thing. You know, a little goes a long way. You can just use this like Kiara Wise or like Westman Atelier and just kind of cover in certain spots, but it also works this way. And so I want to create the, the most high stakes game is what I'm trying to say. I want to show the most product applied on the face that you would and then, you know, then you'll know if applying very little product would also work, which it, it probably will. So I said it in the previous video, but what this reminds me of the most is CureWise. The way that it's solid at room temperature, it's coconut oil based. So, you know, I, I understand some of you guys will be disappointed by that. I did not design this product. <laughs> you can see that's a really, really nice shade match. And the one thing that I have learned so far with this is, because I've only worn it like one other time, don't try and build other products on top of it. Much like, I mean like a concealer or something, much like Cure Wise, it builds well on itself, but I don't feel like it really plays well with others. And I am in the minority 
of people who don't really like the uncover up, the original uncover up. I feel like all it does is crease, like instantly it creases. And I also don't like the uh, unpowder because it's pure silica and it like granulates my makeup. It, there's no clean finish. It doesn't seem to react to finishing spray because it's just a mineral. And so when you hit it with finishing spray, it just kind of like shrugs it off. So it just doesn't work like a powder that I would expect to get for that amount of money. So while it was tempting to do like a full face of RMS today, I'm not going to do that because I actually don't like a lot of the RMS products well enough that I feel confident in that being the most like ideal wear test to show you guys the potential of this makeup. And like I said, I'm not going to go in with any concealer or anything. I probably will build that up just a little bit more underneath my eyes. Let's do that. See how that works with just my finger. Because this is not such a tan or like warm shade that I can't then like build it up. But I will say once it warms to your skin, I mean, it's certainly a lot less firm than the uncover up, the original uncover up, but hopefully it'll kind of dry down and give me a little more coverage. That's nice. And I decided after kind of polling you guys in previous instances of this kind of thing where I'm like, should I do a cream look or should I do a powder look? I tend to poll you guys and the answer is always kind of both, <laughs> which I understand. I think a lot of people are like, not necessarily making that binary decision in the morning. They're just kind of doing whatever it takes to get the look that they like. And so what I'm going to do is go mostly cream and then I will powder where I think it is needed in order for the makeup to kind of stay put, but try and keep this a light dewy face while still covering all my nonsense here. So cool thing about this is yes, it does dry down because it is solid at room temperature. So it doesn't necessarily have like a dry down, dry down, but it does, you know, move around when you move it around and then it stops moving when you stop moving it around. Um, science. When it breaks up during the day, like the, yesterday when I wore it, I wore it with some concealer on top and I didn't really like love it. When it kind of started to break up, I was able to go back in with that brush and just kind of buff it back together. And it was great. But I'm gonna use the Salt New York palette for a few of these shades here. And honestly, I'm like really inspired to do this because I just watched Kiki's video that was like touring the palette basically. Definitely go check out that video because you know, you can see all of the colors in action. You can kind of hear her backstory of, you know, what her intentions were putting the collection together. The ingredients are incredible. I didn't realize these are also, it's all no waste packaging. And uh, this is the contour that I've been raving about. Okay, look at that. No contour, contour. You can't tell that that's makeup. It just looks like I got some snatched cheekbones and boy, that is what contour, <laughs> I have recently learned, is supposed to do. I can speak about anything that I just learned with, uh, with like grandiose unearned authority. That is the blessing of being an Aries, but I did just recently realize that contour is a different thing for a reason. <laughs> I'm on a uh, low fiber diet right now to answer all of the weird, like, I don't know, it's not you guys weird questions. It's me giving really vague kind of things going on in my life in like my Instagram stories and stuff. Anyone who is concerned, I have completely undiagnosed IBD. Like I know I have something that's wrong because I know that I'm you know, super gluten intolerant. I've got autoimmune stuff, I've got psoriasis, I've got all that. And I have, way more than IBS. Like I've got some kind of bad thing happening. It's either like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or uh, my mother has diverticulitis. It could be diverticulitis, something like that. I just hate the gastroenterologists in Austin. I hate them. Every time I go in there, they dismiss me. They're really, really mean. And they end up, you know, wanting to charge me $1,200 for something. And it just, it's made me crazy in the past. And so I just have been putting off going in there even though I know what I really need is uh, an endoscopy. I need a full endoscopy and just see what the heck's going on. I'm also afraid that they're going to tell me that I need to challenge myself and go back to eating gluten for a couple of weeks before I do an endoscopy just so that they can, you know, formally diagnose me with celiac or, or not, which would be fantastic. I don't really know what universe it would be that they would tell me, by the way, you can actually go eat bagels again, but, uh, it would be some kind of strange miracle. It'd be so interesting if they were like, actually, you're just allergic to coffee. <laughs> Go eat bread. I'd be like, 
that sucks, but like, okay, that's a refreshing change of pace. I know that they're gonna tell me to stop drinking coffee. That's another thing. They're gonna be like, well, why are you drinking so much coffee? Why are you just, shut up, okay? You've already taken everything else away from me. I can't have alcohol, I can't have sugar, I can't have any kind of carbs. Give me my coffee, it's not fair. But I know that it's probably not good for me and I'm just going to end up eating what I'm eating right now, which is, you know, pasta, gluten-free pasta and unseasoned oatmeal, which is, the worst thing in the world it's kind of earthy but yeah like that's what i've been eating lately just sad low fiber food in order to subsist what am i talking about all right got my honest beauty is what i'm gonna go in with next in rose pink just dibby dab that on my cheeks here the peel has allowed me to wear less makeup which i really appreciate but at the same time i completely like brain farted on the idea that Coverage also is sun. I have one really pure morsel of a thought and the stupid dogs start going off. I completely blanked on the fact that sun protection is also physical. So like I always think going into summer, I'm like, oh, you know, lightweight face of makeup, lots of SPF, you know, don't have to wear a foundation or whatever. Foundation, whether it has SPF in it or not, and also powder are going to actually act as like a physical barrier that protects you from the sun. And so my little like, five minute minimal face of makeup that I went on my honeymoon with was probably like the biggest mistake. I should have just like actually worn makeup, which is stupid, but it is what it is. I'm going to finally go in with Velvet Melon here from Kosa's. Oh, she's so beautiful. Look at that freaking gorgeous peach color. I just, I can't, but I can and I will. Oh, I think I could just apply blush all day. You guys really, 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 really like responded positively to my idea of doing like a pale girl get ready with me. Uh, it's just basically going to enable me <laughs> for, to like move from bronzer into just even more blush, which it's actually interesting. I like sw was watching Leanne's favorites and stuff like that. Everybody's like, oh, are we, are we all just like getting into blush lately? I'm like, girl, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> I've been here since like the high school Mac days, just loading my face up with like, uh, what's it? Uh, sun bask, you know? I'm gonna take a fluffy brush here from Eco Tools. Make sure there's not like, you know, 500 cat hairs on it. Even though I clean these all the time, they just attract things. Plus the cats have been hiding upstairs because we're taking care of our friend's dog and it's completely disrupting my flow, my personal flow of life because we have to keep them separated because their dog won't stop chasing the cats. And my number one priority is the happiness of my cats. The dogs can eat my shorts. And so the cats have been like hiding upstairs for a week and now my makeup is even hairier. And I try and keep the door closed, but it just doesn't always work. So anyway, that was my story about cat hair and my brushes. Let's go in with the RMS Living Luminizer here because that's probably a more practical choice. Oh boy, is she stiff. This is one of those products that is just, it's so beautiful and it's so good in concept, but I find that it is so stiff and kind of difficult to work with sometimes that like I got more pigmentation on my cheeks as a result of using this um, while I was on my honeymoon because it pushed my SPF out of the way. And like, that's, that's not ideal. You know, that's not really the point. Like you shouldn't have to sacrifice that. So. Um, it is, it's a little bit greasy, it's a little bit oily. I do very much prefer RMS's powder products with the exception of the unpowder, but like their bronzer and their blush and stuff. I think that that formula is so much easier to work with in their cream products. And I get it, I get it that they are, you know, doing something that is off the beaten path and it's something that's necessary, but at the same time, um, sometimes I just find their products a little bit too difficult to work with. I'm just gonna zoom through real quick, putting on my, like my mascara and stuff. I did start using the lash food and the castor oil, uh, one on each eye last night. So that's an ongoing project to see if my eyelashes grow, if we are, you know, fostering growth by doing that. So we shall see. All right, not that I think that it matters, but I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of finishing spray. And I mean a little bit. I just kind of want to hit where I put a little bit of powder. And let's do a little zoom in here real quick so that you guys can see what the texture of this is like on my skin. Yeah. So you can see kind of right here, it's grabbing where I'm peeling and I'm peeling the most right there still because that's just where my glasses sit. Um, it's just 
going to be a matter of how this performs as I like warm up and cool down over the course of the day, you know, like weather wise going outside, coming back inside, whatever, just temperature changes because it does stay movable. Um, and I, that could be really, really good, or that could be really, really bad depending on kind of what the suspension of the pigments um, are and how that kind of communicates with my skin. So RMS of course makes a big deal about their ingredients. That's very much what you're paying for. Jojoba seed oil is the first ingredient. So this is very much like emollient oil based. I like jojoba seed oil for my skin. Castor oil is the second ingredient. Same thing I'm putting on my eyelashes right now to try and see if it'll make them grow. Meadow foam seed oil, which I believe is an ingredient they use pretty commonly in RMS products. Beeswax, so not vegan, but it is also one of the things that makes it solid at room temperature, which also makes it more stable on your skin, but if it is not vegan. Linoleic polyglycerides, coconut oil, laurel lysine, silica, silica is going to help absorb oil over the course of the day. Broody fruit oil, more jojoba seed oil, St. John's wort, horsetail, marigold, country sarsaparilla, turmeric, ashwagandha. Wow, we are getting Ayurvedic today. Licorice and uh, olive leaf, and then the pigmentation. So they have various asterisks on them. One is for certified organic and the other is for wild crafted, which I believe you RMS. I believe you that that's a thing, but it sounds hilarious. <laughs> the claims on this are, it says formulated with our signature organic cold centrifuge coconut oil and a targeted blend of oils and herbs. This formula will help improve skin tone, texture, hydration, and overall radiance. This foundation works for all skin types and is available in a wide range of shades formulated to easily master a flawless finish that mimics natural, youthful skin, works flawlessly with our cult favorite skin to skin foundation brush and can easily set with RMS Beauty's Unpowder. So I didn't do either of those things, but that's just because of experience. I don't have their brush. I don't, I have enough brushes and I just don't love the Unpowder. Oh, they do, they have a whole thing of shade descriptions, which is great. So ivory with a slight golden base is 11, which is what I got. So they do have on the RMS website an entire uh, glossary for that. So I'm going to wear this over my day. I, honestly, guys, first impressions, I've already told you, I think that this performs like a much more expensive foundation, even though it's really expensive, but wow, it's pretty. Wow, it's pretty. It is not an Ilia. You know, it doesn't go on the skin and then have this really happy, thin dry down. It doesn't feel like a prestige foundation in that sense. It feels like an RMS product. If you're, if you're familiar with RMS products, it still feels like an RMS product in the sense that it, it is very oil based. It is very emollient feeling. You are aware of it on your skin. I don't know. I mean, it feels luxurious for sure, but it doesn't feel like a Sephora foundation that has all of those like intense stabilizers in it that makes it feel like it then kind of becomes part of your body. It feels like you have a really, like a hydrating mask on. That's how it feels, if that makes sense. It's not weightless. So yeah, um, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It is the coverage level that I love. The fact that I actually have a little bit of acne. I slept poorly <laughs> and it did a good job of camouflaging things without making me look shellacked with makeup. And it is very, very comfortable for what it is. So I'm going to wear this for the rest of my day. I'm going to come back here in at least eight hours and we're going to do another set of close-ups, show you guys how it performed, things like that. And I will give my final thoughts. So I will see you guys at the end of my day. Hey homies, I'm back. It's the end of my day. <laughs> I sure am balmy. It's definitely been full eight hours. You can see it all over my face. So RMS foundation. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts here. One, yes, we have to take into consideration the ingredients factor, right? We knew going into this that this does not have a whole bunch of silicones and stabilizers and all that kind of stuff that does a lot of the work for us when it comes to keeping something on our face and not moving around. The other side of that is I'm paying $52 for a foundation. Shouldn't they do something to try and make me not have to make those excuses for it? You know, just because it has good ingredients doesn't mean that I should have to like do the feel good thing in my brain to overcome the fact that something isn't performing. That said, I give this a solid eh, because it's somewhere in between 
right? The Westman Atelier Chiar Wise of It All, which just performs miraculously somehow without any kind of dimethicone or anything in it, to my knowledge. And then the other side of the spectrum, which is like the Honest Beauty Cream Foundation, which I found to be lovely, at least used with their primer, but it has dimethicone in it. So I'm paying a premium, I'm paying $52 for Yon, uh, little guy here. Um, I'm sorry, it is, oh boy, I'm exhausted. It's the end of my day, I'm done, I'm like fresh out of words. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I have paid $52 for better foundation before. That said, if it's super, super important for you that like the ingredients and the feel good factor of it, like that's what tops the list for you, maybe, maybe. But like my girl on Instagram who bought this for her brother's wedding or whatever, thinking that this was going to be like a foundation that was going to photograph well or last all day, this is not the foundation. This is certainly not the $52 foundation for you. I'm gonna zoom in in a second and I will show you guys what I'm talking about. It's not an all out disaster, it's not. And that is A, because this is not a high coverage foundation. B, it's skin finish, so as it wears off, you don't see a whole bunch of like obvious lines of demarcation of where it's like wearing off. It does have a nice texture to it. It does wear in a very like emollient, skin loving kind of way, but it's not doing me any favors either. It kind of grabbed on some dry spots. It doesn't support like any amount of powder. I don't know what they're talking about. I, honestly, I thought for a second in the middle of my day, I was just like, I don't know, like maybe I should do a second day wear test and just do like a full face with like a powdered look and see how it goes. But like you can see from the like teeny tiny little dusting of the powder that I did, I used the, the Well People Bio Brightener, just to kind of set it a little bit around my eyes that all it really did was just give it something to carry with it while it creased. It didn't crease everywhere. It did crease under my eyes. It kind of did that instantly. I feel like no further damage was done after about two hours. All of this happened in the first two hours and then the rest of the day I was just kind of like, eh, it's kind of getting greasier. It's kind of getting a little drier, but it did not make any like really strong promises up front. If I could give like one encapsulating thought, it really just performs like the uncover up in the form of a foundation, which I should have expected, but it is not in any way greater than the sum of its parts. And I don't really think that if you're performing, if you're performing, if you're expecting a performance product for your $52, you're not gonna get a performance product for your $52. You're going to get a natural RMS vibes kind of product. Let me zoom in. Okay, so you can see uh, around my mouth that if you're looking at it from the standpoint of like a foundation wear test, right? You're like, that's not so bad khaki. It's not like breaking up, doing creepy, weird stuff. It hasn't rubbed all off your face and everything. Like it's not embarrassing. It's not, it's not embarrassing, but it's like not improving anything. <laughs> I'd rather not be wearing makeup than be wearing this. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing exciting about putting this on my face. There's nothing that I would feel comfortable as like an influencer. Uh, telling you guys to run out and buy this because it's not going to change your life in any positive consequential way. So um, I do. I, I definitely feel like yes, anything, no matter what the price should still knock your socks off. It definitely like sets a higher standard for me to recommend something if I know that someone's going to have to come out of pocket a lot of money for it. So um, the green, the, I have a green couch. I like never thought that it would reflect green onto my face, but it does. All of this like creasing underneath my eyes and stuff that happened really, really quickly. And you can see it kind of grabbed at any like healing acne. and peely spots and like this kind of stuff, you know? And it also stays sticky all day, all day. It just, it's just kind of what you'd expect, you know? So yeah, I mean, I'm not bagging on the product because it doesn't, it doesn't disappoint me when my expectations really should have started at RMS to begin with. And I know that sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. My point is 
Armas, their cream products, they all perform like this. They do. I, I did expect to be wowed. I did expect to be pleasantly surprised, but I wasn't. So that is the conclusion today. It is very much RMS thinking that RMS's formulas work just fine and they're just gonna chase that feeling and me and my $52 are going to stick to RMS's powder products going forward and maybe their lip and cheek, but like their complexion products just don't cut it for me. I'm glad we tested this. I'm glad that we know. But if you're like me and your skin can tolerate a little bit of dimethicone to make something perform and $52 is not nothing to you and you have high expectations. I have high expectations. I just have so many other foundations that I love. My expectations are admittedly very high. It's just, it just doesn't cut it. It just doesn't cut it. So that's where I leave you guys today. I, at least I get to save you $52, okay? At least I, at least there's that. So um, I have refrained from watching any of the other reviews. I think that there are like two that popped up on my feed actually um, for this foundation. And now I'm gonna go watch them and see how they went and hopefully feel better about myself that I didn't do something glaringly idiotic uh, putting this on. But I feel like we did a good job. We gave it a real college try and it just, didn't rise to the occasion. So thank you guys for watching today. I hope that this was enlightening for you. I feel like this is a pretty good conclusion. A lot of times I get done with foundation wear tests and I'm like, nah, this was very much like, skip it. But yeah, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Let me know uh, what your expectations would be for a $52 foundation. Like. I want to know where that ranks for you guys. If you were to shell out $52 for an ounce of product, what would it need to do and what ingredients criteria would it need to meet? Let me know that guys. Thank you so much for watching today and for hanging out with me. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Fun fact, my battery died three times while I was trying to film this outro. Three times. I've been in this room a really long time. Starting to lose it.